We're going to get straight on with it because uh, I've got loads to uh, talk to you about. Um, the Holocaust Memorial Day today, first of all, wants to say something about that. Uh, and also I watched the programme last night about, uh, uh, oh, it's actually 75 years since Auschwitz concentration camp was liberated. Um, and people across the UK um, will remember those who suffered under the Nazi pers Nazi persecution. Um, uh, I just remember when I visited Auschwitz and it's a very strange experience, but uh, very, um, I mean, I remember it. It's very, very hard to sort of, to visit that place, but I think I, I encourage lots of people or anybody to go there because uh, nothing can, uh, prepare you for what uh, what you learn when you're there um, but it's also really important isn't it for uh, people not for that kind of thing not to ever happen again so and there was lots what I liked about it there was loads and loads of school coaches there there was ones from the UK but they were all from all over Europe all visiting uh, and all the kids were going and you know and that's the that's its legacy really that it was going to tell it's going to be the place that tells people not to make that kind of thing happen again. Um, but I want to tell you a quick story about <clears throat> when I was there. There was uh, there were some flowers in the courtyard, which was uh, an area which they used to um, to shoot uh, the prisoners, political prisoners, I, 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 if I remember rightly. Uh, there was a firing wall, and there was lots of bullet holes all over the wall in this courtyard. And there were some flowers. Uh, at the bottom of the uh, of the courtyard, in the centre, and there's a little plaque. And the the lady that was showing us around told us about this plaque and the flowers. And, uh, and um, it was a story about a guy called Maximilian Colby, who was a priest. Um, and what the situation was, um, and this plaque was uh, a memorial to him. And what it was was he was a prisoner at the the camp. And there was another guy there who was a, a sergeant in the Polish army who had been, um, well, had been captured, and uh, I can't remember why, but he was pulled out for execution. And uh, that the priest stepped forward and agreed, or asked if he could be executed instead of the guy, because the guy had a family, a wife and children, and uh, and and they did. They 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 took the priest away instead and uh, they executed him instead of this guy uh, and basically uh, uh, and what is moving about the story is the fact that also moving about the story should I say is that the guy uh, who was a guy called Franz, Francis Dek, uh, I just wrote his name down here um, Gadju Nizek um, I don't know if I've pronounced it right but he survived and uh, he died at the age of 94 or 95 but he, uh, when we when we were there, there were some flowers there, and he'd been and left these flowers for this guy, um, and apparently he visits the camp often to pay respects to the priest uh, at the plaque where he where he died. So um, it was just really really moving, and uh, I remember that even to this day. So that's the kind of power that you get out of visiting a place like that, even though it's probably one of the worst places uh, you'll ever visit. So. Uh, 